Hey squaddies and welcome to Thriving with the Sussexes. My name is Deanna and I'm here to report on all things Sussex. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Now let's get on with it. Hey squaddies, good morning, good afternoon and good evening whenever you're listening. Hello. Our Duke and Duchess are back home in Montecito with the people who truly loves them. I just know that once they arrive home, they get their babies, all the hugs and kisses that made up for all those miserable past two weeks. According to Gail King, who confirmed that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are back in Montecito, are safe and sound. We get on a sigh and relief knowing that they're safe and surrounded by love. And once they get themselves back together, you know... After dealing with emotionally draining, toxic individuals, you deserve some much needed rejuvenation. I just hope that they get back to business very soon and, you know, keep on thriving. To be away from all that toxic, miserable, evilness, jealousy, hate. Ugh. Positive vibes, Deanna. Positive vibes. I look forward to seeing our Duke and Duchess in the near future doing what they do best, while earning their own coins and respect. Something the Wolf of Royals seems to not realize. Respect is earned, not given. Harry and Meghan are respected because they're both influential together as well as individually. The world knows this, as well as businesses. Why do you think that so many posts about them usually have thousands of comments and tens and hundreds of thousands of reactions? For Harry to go through the humiliation that his family thought that they put him up through, when in actuality made him stand out like the king that he is. While Meghan stood out surrounded by three jealous and spiteful witches while looking like the queen that she is. Harry and Meghan won. The most influential couple won against that toxic, evil welfare royal family. And even they know it. That's why they try their hardest to just try to shut them down, try to make them feel bad, try to make them look bad in the press. And, and it did not work for the mass majority. But let me get back to Megan <laughs> being around those vultures because that's who they are to me. And I hate that this American biracial woman or black woman because I don't even think that they even acknowledge her biracialness. They just see black. So... The audacity of this American black woman coming into this establishment when it's her work. I mean, hello, she's been working since she was 13. When she and Harry were secretly dating, it was Harry who stayed in her house. Megan came into that family as a self-made millionaire. The others came in with their hands sticking out. If that monarchy crumbled today, at this very moment, I honestly do not think that any of them will survive. I mean, none of them seem to have the same work ethic as Prince Harry. Like, he is out here surviving, thriving, living his best life in Montecito, California. And it's the first day of autumn, so he in California. It's going to be nice out there for a while, so. <laughs> they're good. Or as I said before, they're good, good. But yeah. That family, the Welfare Royals, would not survive. They'll be struggling horribly. Well, maybe not for Fiesta. For Fiesta, she'll probably find a job at some old navy. You know, maybe she'll finally find something that looks somewhat appealing on her for uh, a cheap price. Can't say the same about the original Yacht Girl Kate and the original Rob Walla Camilla. I think I read somewhere or watched something about Camilla not even wanting to, to work. She didn't even want a career. She wanted to she wanted to live off of like her husband, her wealthy husband. She wanted to find a wealthy man to live off on. So being a mistress to a married man was her best bet. And she was just doing what a typical side chick would do. Um Camilla, darling, 
Do you have any more tampons? Charles, really? I mean, in, in that circle, or you know, just in general, I guess, all side chicks work the same. It's just depending on what kind of side chick you are. I mean, if they're side chicks for, you know, low income guys, or side chicks for, you know, the wealthy, powerful guys. So she, she went up to the top, you know, of the ladder. And she got her, a, she got her a Charles. I mean, he's not the best looking guy out there, but hey, she's not the best looking woman. So it, hey, it, it worked out, right? And then she became queen consort. And look at that. And the funny thing about that is that she's definitely not the first side chick to become a queen consort. And she definitely won't be the last. Just saying. And what about this heifer? This ice queen right here. I think, in my honest opinion, she's an opportunist to the T. <laughs> she ditched all her friends and switched them out for upper class aristocratic friends. Desperate witches always have a backup plan. So I honestly think that if everything came crumbling down, bankrupt, nothing. Zero, a zero balance on the accounts, on all the accounts. <laughs> I think that she can make a fortune divorcing incandescent and writing a book about her experiences in that life. Of course, she wouldn't write it though, because I mean, does she even know how to write? But yeah, you know she would be doing incredibly well if, if she accepts a divorce from incandescent so that he can marry his rose bush. And, you know, of course, she could, like, have the media feel bad for her. And, you know, because you know how they are. You know how the media is. Bare minimum Karens are always praised for their mediocrity. You know how it is. Anywho, they all hate Megan because, unlike them, she can survive and thrive if something truly bad happens. Megan showed the world her beauty, strength, resilience, composure, grace, elegance, and how to break the internet in Stella McCartney. Oh, and that photo. Have you guys seen this photo? I think you've probably seen it by now. Anyway, Harry looked like he let out two weeks worth of toxicity <laughs> that came out of that family. Same with Megan. I'm sure they both feel so so good at that moment like oh my gosh we were just done with this finally Whew. and now they're back home safe with their babies once again and I know that some of you felt the exact way of feeling just as relieved Tyler Perry on why he offered Harry and Meghan to live in his home Tyler Perry joined Hoda Colby and Jenna Bush Hager to talk about his new film, A Jazz Man Blues, and why he offered his home for Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan to live in. Jenna praised Tyler Perry on his kindness and generosity before segueing into him offering Harry and Meghan his home in California. <laughs> nice move, Jenna. Tyler shared that it was a very difficult time for the couple. He also shared that he wished the world knew how much they love each other. These two people love each other. They found each other out of all these odds. And that the love that they have is really, really moving. I just wanted to do anything I could to support them. He ended the topic with, If I don't have that, will she and Harry have? I don't want it. <laughs> Tyler, I concur. Tyler Perry is such a wonderful person, such a beautiful soul, and oh, he's just the best. That's the type of friend that everybody needs. I think if everybody had somebody like Tyler in their life, as a friend or as someone you can count on, the world would be in a good place. Hey, call me naive or, as I always say, optimistic. I have all the sources, articles, videos I use for this podcast in the description box. And I would also like to wish everyone in the Northern Hemisphere 
a happy autumn equinox, aka first day of fall or autumn. I personally call it autumn. And also a happy spring equinox, and aka first day of spring to everyone in the southern hemisphere. But yeah, autumn is my absolute favorite season of the year. I look forward to it. Just everything about it is just so beautiful. And I love it. And I hope that your day is filled with blue skies, sunshines, with positive vibes. I'd like to say thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And hit that bell. My name is Diana. And you are watching Thriving with the Sussexes. Talk to you soon.